Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the CTA icon with a mouse click tap element trigger. What we're going to be doing is clicking on this call to action and have a little bit of action going on in the background. This is going to make buttons a little bit more fun, a little bit more interactive, and for some sites, this could totally work. Let's go in first and see how this is structured. Let's go into the HTML here and we're going to get to our button and we can see we have our CTA trigger as the element trigger. That's the parent wrapper that's holding the button and our Lottie icon. So we have this containing both of these elements. This has a higher Z index, the button, so that we are making sure that we always click on the button and we're not clicking on the Lottie icon. And we'll also see that this is always centered. So let's say we have a, a really long button. It's still going to be centered in the button. So this can be applied site wide. You don't have to worry about changing the location of the Lottie icon or doing anything for repositioning. It still works for this long call to action. Okay, but we're gonna keep it on the short call to action. And we are going to, let's, let's go over how we're centering this. We have this set to absolute with a left and top of 50%. And then we are applying a transform move with a negative 50% horizontal and a negative 50% vertical. This is going to always keep it centered regardless of its width and height. As long as we are still within this call to action trigger, it is going to resize itself, uh, reposition itself accordingly. Okay, great. Now let's see how this works. Let's get into IX2. Let's see what we have on the element trigger. We have our mouse click tap tied to the CTA trigger. And when we go in, we'll see that we have a timed animation on first click. We don't have anything applied to second click. You'll also see that this is named CTA click and hover. We have the same exact time animation for our mouse click and our mouse hover examples. We don't need to create different timed animations for both because they're actually going to be doing the same exact thing. So please be comfortable reusing a timed animation and just changing the element trigger. Let's get in and we see that we have a step one at 0% with a 0% with a zero second duration. And then for a 0.5 second duration, we are going to animate to 100%, and that's going to create this type of effect. We also have only children with this class applied, of course, because we only want the animation of this button to play. And I'm gonna show you something that we did here. Um, not having this set as initial state is going to let it replay. So you'll see that when I'm in preview and I continue to click, this will continue to replay, to replay, to replay. Great, that's going to be what we want. If I were to set this to initial state, it's only going to play once. Click again, nope, 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 nope. I do not want to leave. And the reason for this is we're playing the animation once, it's going to 100% and it never actually returns back to zero. So we're clicking it again and again and there's no state where it's, hey, now I'm back to zero, let's animate it again. So by not setting this as initial state and just setting it as a first step with a duration of zero seconds, we're going to be able to continue playing this animation as we want. And that is how you apply a call to action icon on a mouse click tap. That's effing sweet.